Hello everybody. My name is Rob. I'm the customer support chief for M3D and today I'm going to be walking you through how to do the manual calibration on your Micro Plus. The screen we're going to be using to do this is the cat screen. So named I think is pretty obvious for Morris the cat sitting there representing the 3D model on your build plate. The other things you see in this screen are these five locations and the button to control moving the print head to them. So today what we're going to go over is how to adjust all of these, how to tell when they're right, and then we're going to then print a test border to show exactly where we've got everything and to check on our calibration producing the results we want. So the way we're going to do that is first I'm going to close this menu and show you how to open it. This menu is your basic GUI here, the front screen, got the printer connected, serial number shown, and then we have our settings. So we're going to open the uh, settings window from the gear, and in the calibration menu, here's Morris and here's the cat screen. So let me open up my other camera very quickly. And this way you can see on the Micro Plus I'm attached to what all of our commands are doing. So you notice there on the print bed I have a single sheet of loose leaf paper. That piece of paper is how we're going to check the nozzle position with the controls that we make here in the GUI. The nozzle wants to be 0.1 millimeters off of the bed. It needs that much of a gap so that the filament can come out cleanly and make a good first layer and be set on the prints and we can get everything set. Now, to make sure all of these are exactly 0.1 millimeter off of the bed in each corner and its center, we're going to use a piece of paper, which if you know a standard sheet of loose leaf paper is just a hair thicker than that. So as we move to these and make adjustments, we should see that that piece of paper just barely slides between the two. Just a little bit of resistance, but you should be able to clearly slide it in and out from between the nozzle and the bed. So that's what we're going to do each time we make an adjustment. So the very first one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move to center. Now I've just pulled this printer out of the box. I know it's not calibrated, so I'm guessing the nozzle is going to be just a little bit high when I move to center. And so we're going to use the bed offset to move it down and then save it where we want it to be. So first we're going to hit move to center. All right, so it's moved to where it thinks center is. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this piece of paper and it moves very freely between the two. I can move it without any resistance at all, so the nozzle is too high in this position. So I'm going to use the arrows here to move this down. Every click moves the motor just a little bit closer by a single step. Well, by I should say by a single uh, 0.1 millimeter. Alright, so I have some resistance there. See, I can pull one way, but I can't push back. So I went a little too far. I'm going to back it up just a little bit because I should be able to go both directions. So I went down nearly 0.1 millimeter, so it was a little too much. So right there at 0.6, I can slide it in, I can go back and forth, and I think you can hear just a little bit of resistance. My hand's actually not rubbing on the bed, so that's the paper. So between 0.6 and 0.5, let's go up until it can't, it's too much again. All right, so at 0.2 it was a little light. At 0.6 it was a little tight. So I'm going to go with 0.4 is where I feel that should be. And then I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to hit apply. All right, it'll tell me that my settings have been applied to the printer. And that's the center. So now anytime I hit this button, it'll raise up a little bit and go right back there. So we'll put our paper under. Yeah, and it still feels nice the same back and forth nice and easily but I can still feel it scraping just a little bit so now we're gonna move on to our other corners so I like to go in the top left corner and then work my way around clockwise is the way I prefer to do this so we're gonna move off to this And let's go ahead and move to center again. I like to check center just one last time after I've done all the corners, just to make sure everything feels good. And yeah, I feel like I could raise my center just a little bit after adjusting the corners. 
Sometimes you overdo it with the corner and yeah, so 0.5. We'll apply that, and now all five all five points have now been checked. We've done all four corners, two of which which didn't need any adjustment. The two in the front needed to be a little bit more balanced, and then the center has we did our initial calculation and then after doing all the corners we found out we had overestimated that and we brought it up so next thing we want to do is we want to go over to the advanced calibration tab and we're going to see what kind of test border this gets us All right, and that is our test border completed. So let us pull this out. It's a very good looking one. Okay, so let's take a look at the different parts of this test border. First, this first line is fantastic. See that it's got a uniformity of straightness. It's both edges are nicely symmetrical. It's very, very thick and robust and it's just completely adhered to this print bed and that is the start of a good solid print. Now, I'm going to turn this just a little bit. In this corner here, this is actually a normal sign. You will see this on most test borders as this second line gets started, but it serves as a great example. You see where it's nice and thin right down here at the very, very tip, and it doesn't look like a whole lot of filament got extruded? That is because the nozzle is a little bit high there because it's starting its move on top of this piece of over-extruded test border here. And so the nozzle is a little too high here as it comes down, and that's why it sort of tapers down in here. So if you see a whole line printed nice and thin like this, this is a sign that the nozzle is too high going on here, and it'll be wispy all along the various way. All right, another thing to look for is if you were to see a corner here, let me move this so it just can be seen, where this piece here is normal on the test border because it's where it starts and finishes, so it's pushing out a lot of filament. The test border doesn't use retraction like it does printing on models, so there's always a whole lot of extra filament going on here, and it's put out that way so you have a good bit of filament on the plate to see and work with. But if you were to see issues like this where it's very large and built up, that means the printer is um, able to push too much filament down in a single area and it's getting caught. This is a sign that the nozzle is too low and it's not able to move properly to the next position and it just builds up and gets filament stuck there. So that's just sort of the artificial way that looks. The other, but if you look at our test border here from the settings we got, this is a fantastic test border. This is a great calibration that is saved onto this printer and this is going to make a lot of cool models with good reliability and good solid bases without a lot of risk of detaching from the print bed mid print. So that's how to use the cat screen. If you have any questions ever, you can always reach the M3D support team through our website where we have our contact forms. And if you need our specific help to get your calibration adjusted, we're happy to offer tips, tricks, suggestions, answer any questions you may have on this guide or how to use any of the other features. And as always, we'll be continuing to make video guides showing how to operate and use the various features of the M3D Micro Plus software so that your prints can be successful. Thank you for joining me today. This again has been the M3D CAT Calibration Screen Guide, and we hope to see you next time. Have a great day.